Nutrition is the most important thing that physicians should know because it determines so many different aspects of disease. Doctors are not taught. They get their knowledge how everyone else gets their knowledge basically through the media. There's a lot of myth about it because people are afraid if I don't eat meat I will run into a protein deficiency. That's a myth that doesn't exist but it's planted our, in our brains. The meat, dairy and egg industry um, are having quite significant um, influence on the information going out to doctors. Nutrition is important for medical doctors because many of our chronic diseases are related to nutrition. Doctors don't know about us and we didn't know about us until six years ago because nutrition is hardly taught in medical schools around the world. So you spent four, five, six years in medical school to learn all the other things. It's a big topic and nutrition is only taught for a few hours. In order to become a cardiologist, for example, one has to go to college, medical school, an internal medicine residency, and then do a cardiology fellowship. Throughout every aspect of that training, we get very little, if any, nutrition training. Nutrition, or bad nutrition, is um, behind uh, so many of the chronic diseases that we treat. Nutrition is in my view, essential for medical doctors to include in their practice, in their treatment of patients, because with nutrition, we are able to influence chronic diseases in a very positive way. Nutrition is the most important thing that physicians should know because it determines so many different aspects of disease. When you look at the Western world, we live longer than ever, but also the chronic diseases are still increasing. Type 2 diabetes is arriving in the world, Cancer is increasing. Many of these chronic diseases can be stopped or even reversed. Looking at heart disease, diabetes type 2, or even certain cancers. I think it's essential to make a change and to add plant-based nutrition to the treatment of patients because we can not only uh, stop stabilize diseases, we can even reverse it. That is something that we won't see with uh, the modern medicine we have today with the pills and the procedures. Nutrition is actually seen as a separate specialty. There's nursing, there's physical therapy, there are a variety of things that uh, make up our team-based care. And nutrition has always been off in the aspect of someone else. And we do have nutritionists, and our nutritionists in the United States particularly are pretty good at uh, diabetes control. Not quite as good, based on the evidence, at lowering people's weights, but those are the real two things that they have tried very hard to do. There have, hasn't been a lot of traction, unfortunately, in the area of regression of disease or treatment of inflammatory conditions. Uh, those, they uh, believe, belong to the physicians, and it really should be quite the opposite. We should know more about nutrition. They should know more about prevention of a variety of disease, particularly through plant-based uh, dieting, because the, the, the data is actually out there. A lot of the data that I quote is actually in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and artic articles that they should be actually uh, very familiar with, and yet we just have a handful of plant-based physicians and a smaller handful of plant-based dietitians. Doctors are not taught about it because yeah, there is a lot to learn in medical school. You have to learn anatomy, they have to learn... If you discuss this topic with people in the university, they say, well, we cannot accommodate because it's not regarded to be important. It's not yet a priority. Why? Because doctors and the universities have not understood how powerful plant-based nutrition can be. Doctors in general don't know about the power of nutrition in healthcare. Part of it is that we don't get a lot of um, nutrition education in medical school. But now we know, also through, uh, through the WHO since last year, that red meat is a possible cause of um, uh, cancer, for instance. So it's not our best friend. But doctors are not taught. They get their knowledge how everyone else gets their knowledge basically through the media and the media are not educated either. And I think more recently what's happened is um, there's an emphasis on 
evidence-based medicine where the highest level of evidence is considered a double-blind randomised controlled trial where group A gets this tablet and group B gets a placebo and of course that favours um, high levels of evidence for drugs and that, that actually only have small benefits but well proven small benefits. Um, I think also in recent years I've noticed in my medical magazines here in Australia that um, the meat, dairy and egg industry um, are having quite significant um, influence on the information going out to doctors. The difference in treating a patient with medication compared to nutrition is uh, in chronic diseases. What you, the, the doctor will see is that the patient will get better. And for instance, if there is hypertension, the doctor will have to lower medication and eventually stop. And diabetes type 2, even when people have been for years on diabetes medication, if they are really adherent to a whole food plant-based diet, the doctor can eventually usually bring down medication and in many cases stop. So that makes that that, that's for the patient, of course, an enormous. It's also that they don't have the side effects of medication. And also that their whole um, chronic disease w will not progress any further. For instance, with diabetes, there are so many complications. Heart disease is the biggest one, but also blindness or kidney disease. Imagine that you stay away from all of that. There are a few conditions, and particularly in cardiology, that are, you're born with it, congenital heart disease, there's something that you, there's nothing you can do about it. There are col cholesterol conditions such as familial hyperlipidemia, and if you have those genes, you're going to have a difficult time with cholesterol management, but for the most part, I would say a good 95% at least of what we do are degenerative conditions that actually occur because of what we eat. So it's, it's fantastic for the patient, but imagine what it would be for the doctor as well. Most of us became doctors because we want to heal. We want to treat diseases so patients can give, live a perfectly happy life. And with a lot of the chronic diseases that's not the case, because we are proud of the fact that we live longer, but we live many more years probably in, in misery due to a lot of chronic diseases. So doctors can experience firsthand that patients get well, and they feel great about it. Having a um, whole foods plant-based diet in your sort of uh, medical toolkit or armamentorium of medical treatments, um, you know, I, I guess would give you um, a, a treatment option that was actually going to get people better because it was going to be taking away some of the causes. And so rather than just giving someone their blood pressure or diabetes tablet and gradually watching them get worse over the years, albeit more slowly if you treat them well and manage their disease well, um, you'd actually see some of them get better. And uh, that would also be good for the doctor as well because, um, you know, we'd actually be able to feel good that our patients were getting better. As a doctor, you want to heal patients. And with chronic diseases, that's basically not possible. They will tell the patient these are the medic medications you have and you will have to use them for the rest of your life. Wow, that's quite a sentence, isn't it? And now they can heal the patient and bring down the medication and get them off medication. So, so satisfying for a doctor as well that you actually can see the patient get better. Here at the American College of Cardiology we are working on uh, developing a larger database of review articles. Some of them are actually in review right now and hopefully will be published soon. They're really aimed at cardiologists, but um, they're, this is an area where more and more literature is happening every day. You have some real gurus um, around the country in the United States, such as Michael Greger. He has a wonderful website. He's a um, family practice physician, I believe, who spends pretty much all of his time writing and reading about nutrition. Uh, you have Caldwell Esselstyn with his website, um, Dean Ornish with his website, Joel Furman. You have a lot of people who are dedicating themselves to getting the word out. And so there really is not a paucity of information right now, and just a Google search such as regression of heart disease, for example, will bring up a, a lot of these things. The question is now, how can doctors 
educate themselves in nutrition because it's not really taught in um, uh, continuous medical education either. Although I have to say, especially in the United States, there are now conferences specially geared on nutrition, plant-based nutrition and health. So there is the International Plant-Based Nutrition in Healthcare Conference. Uh, the last few years it was always in uh, Los Angeles and Anaheim. And, but there are a lot of other plant-based nutrition conferences, PCRM, which is the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in Washington DC, also every year has a nutrition conference. And so that, that's a good way, of course, to uh, start and to get a little bit of an idea. How can you educate yourself uh, more about plant-based nutrition as a doctor? There are two books I could recommend. This is easy to read, that is the so-called China study which was a study done in rural China. The conclusion of this book is, the more plant-based food people would eat in rural China, the less prone they were to chronic diseases. Very easy to read and very compelling. Another good book is one that came out uh, last year. It's called How Not to Die, which means not you will die in the end, but um, how not to die of chronic diseases and how not to die prematurely. And this book uh, uh, by Dr. Michael Greger uh, writes about the 15 leading causes of death and the research behind it, what nutrition can do for it. And it has about uh, over two and a half thousand references. So it's all referenced. So all the research people can find and read it themselves. And there is actually a certificate level course that you can do online. Um, um, to get a certificate in plant-based nutrition with uh, E. Cornell. A whole food plant-based diet is a diet based on four groups. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes. You know that you get all the nutrients you need if you eat from all four quadrants. The best way of consuming these foods is as whole as possible in their natural state. So don't process them too much. It's better to eat an apple than to drink the apple juice. So we get also all the fiber and all the nutrients that come with them. The only thing you would need to supplement is vitamin B12. But if you eat balanced from this so-called power plate, that's the core, that's the secret of whole food plant-based nutrition. There's no need for meat, for iron or dairy, for calcium. And as for protein, Yes, my giant morning bowl of porridge actually meets the Australian Institute of Sport athletes post-training uh, protein requirement of 20 grams plus. What is also a pleasant side effect of uh, this diet, the food is rich in nutrients and very low in calories. Most of the typical Western food is the other way around. You have a lot of calories and hardly any nutrition. I always tell uh, folks that they, they need to supplement two things when they're doing a completely plant-based diet. Number one is B12. And why is that? Because if you're eating animals, you're eating animals that eat dirty vegetables. If you eat dirty vegetables, you're going to get B12, which comes from the soil. If you're a human and you're a vegetarian, you're probably going to wash your vegetables, and so you're not getting that B12. So just take a B12 supplement. Don't eat the animals who ate them. It doesn't make sense. Uh, the, th the other thing that you have to supplement is the retirement income because you're going to live longer. So those, those are the two things I warn people. Um, the other nutrients are actually all there, pretty much. I mean, there, you know, people will argue about uh, some very arguable things like, oh, you've got to have omega-3 fatty acids. Well, first of all, there are vegetable sources of omega-3s. Um, point A and point B is that in cardiology, all of our omega-3 fatty acid trials Oh, it'll prevent heart attack, it'll prevent stroke, it'll reduce rhythm disturbances. They all blew up, they were negative. And so that's happened with pretty much every supplement in cardiology, uh, vitamin C, vitamin A, notable for the fact that it increased, uh, if the patients were in the smoking group, it increased the lung cancer rate. Uh, so we really don't recommend vitamin A in smoking. Um, vitamin uh, 
E was another one in the HOPE trial that did absolutely nothing. Folic acid, um, I mean, so why am I listing all these things? Because they're embarrassingly things that we were used to actually prescribe and we had to go back and take the prescriptions back <laughs> when the large randomized trial was, uh, said that they actually don't do any good and some of them showed a tendency toward harm. So in terms of micronutrients, if, you're, if a person is eating a whole food plant-based diet, uh, with or without the veggie burgers and the processed soy and the processed stuff that um, I don't see the data, I see a lot of opinions, a lot more heat than light, <laughs> okay, if, if, you, if you know what I mean. Uh, if you're eating that sort of uh, diet, you're pretty much getting everything and just watch the B12. In general, people are a little bit scared if you talk about whole food plant-based diet and eliminating all the animal products because they are afraid that they might miss out on certain nutrients. And I, I, I understand because generations have been brought up that we need meat and we need dairy. We need meat, the protein and the iron from meat and we need from dairy the calcium. But think about it. How did it get in the animals in the first place? They got it from vegetables. The animals we eat are vegetarians, are herbivores. So we can eat it straight from the source instead of eating it through the middleman, the middle animal. And the, 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 the animal, eating it uh, via the animal gives us a lot of toxic products in our body. Even the iron from meat is a highly oxidative in our body, so gives a, a high oxidative stress. It always has saturated fats, which are not healthy. Uh, trans fats, um, uh, certain hormones, where even if the, the animal is not being given extra hormones, it has growth hormones that can promote cancer in our body. So we should cut out the animal in the middle and go straight to the plants ourselves. There's a lot of myth about it because people are afraid if I don't eat meat, I will run into a protein deficiency. That's a myth that doesn't exist, but it's planted our, in our brains. The same, oh, what about my iron? Well, whole food plant rich nutrition offers you a lot, a lot of the natural iron. So don't be afraid, it's okay. The real question about whole food plant-based diet is what doesn't it cure? I've actually um, been many times, uh, if I just give you the last few months, sitting in a clinic, um, getting a lot of referrals these days, sp specifically for nutrition, interestingly enough. So we, we call it our cardio nutrition department within cardiology now. And it's interesting that um, I'm sitting there, <clears throat> because of the electronic medical record, I have to have the computer open anyway. And uh, as I like to share with people, whatever literature, whether it's Esselstyn's image of the artery that opens up. I actually show those to patients because I've got you know, a, a search engine right there. Well, I've had the experience of having patients sit there and ask, well, I also have multiple sclerosis, ulcerative colitis, uh, diabetic neuropathy. These are ones where, I, and, and I actually would type the word, diabetic neuropathy, vegan diet, and an article comes up. Invariably, these conditions actually have some data, uh, and that particular one, um, it was just dramatic improvement that occurred. Uh, it's actually done, to, that study was done by Neil Barnard um, in the United States, another sort of plant-based guru. Then you, you've, um, for the ulcerative colitis one, a real randomized trial was done and showed that you have 0% um, recurrences in the first year and 10% in the second year. There's no medication that could come close to matching that. So I'm really wondering at this point, um, everyone knows uh, if they're in the tennis wor world um, about the inflammatory condition of lupus and um, uh, Sjogren's syndrome uh, because Venus Williams had Sjogren's syndrome and uh, wasn't able to play and then they put her on the steroids and her joints would feel better but then she couldn't really uh, practice as well and someone asked her to uh, uh, try a vegan diet and she's back playing and you know, she's 36 or 37. She played really well yesterday. One of the problems with the Western diet 
the food contributes to what we call chronic inflammation. That means chronic irritation in your body and that is probably one of the root causes of the chronic illnesses we have discussed before. You reverse that process because the nutrients in plants are rich in cancer fighting, have cancer fighting properties, they have anti-aging properties uh, and the list goes on and on. Bottom line is I think we have some literature on a variety, particularly inflammatory conditions uh, where it seems to like make sense um, because we do know that C-reactive protein, uh, an inflammatory marker in the body, does go down, cholesterol goes down. It may be that um, yeah, everything that has to do with inflammation improves dramatically with plant-based nutrition and it ought to be a cornerstone of therapy of, of every one of those conditions. Plant-based nutrition is not only good for heart disease, for cardiovascular disease, but also for type 2 diabetes, for obesity, but many other conditions. We know, for instance, autoimmune diseases, for instance, rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis or Crohn's disease, all chronic debilitating diseases. And with a strict whole food plant-based diet, these diseases can be reversed. Um, another example, erectile dysfunction um, will, will respond to plant-based nutrition. Um, some forms of cancer, like low-grade prostate cancer, responds well to plant-based nutrition. Um, even we have now Alzheimer's disease, we know that people on a typical Western diet, including meat and, and the heme iron, are more at risk to develop Alzheimer's disease. Blindness, cataract, old age blindness, the same experience, lower risk when you're on a plant-based diet, higher risk when you're on a um, Western diet. So it's a little bit boring, but it's a very consistent pattern throughout many diseases. The beauty with a whole food plant-based diet is that it's not only healthy for people that have heart disease or diabetes, but for most of our chronic diseases. And there are many of those. So except for heart disease and diabetes, cancer, many cancer uh, can be prevented or even when they, people get cancer, they can help their body heal with a whole food plant-based diet but also autoimmune diseases, for instance, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, colitis. The, all these illnesses uh, are basically food-borne. They start in our gut. And when we have a very healthy gut, we will get rid of these diseases. And that is wonderful. That's amazing. Um, Animal-based foods, can disrupt the, the healthy bacteria in our gut and uh, the plant-based foods will restore it and that is one way of healing our bodies. A whole foods plant-based diet has been said by uh, experts much wiser than myself to have a wide breadth of effect that is the same diet that can help people lose weight, that can reverse heart disease, can also improve diabetes, can also be used to treat autoimmune disease. Well, um, it can also be used to um, uh, slow the growth or prevent cancer in some instances. We talk about whole food plant-based diet and other people might say, yeah, so that's vegan. And in a sense, that is true. It's, it's vegan, we are not eating any, any animal products. You can be a vegan and not eat any animal products because you could still be a junk vegan. You could still eat a lot of processed food or food which is very high in fat or trans fat or very sugary. And that is a big difference because people that eat whole food plant-based, they come from the health side of things. And are um, in the first place focused on health. So vegans also bring it further. They will avoid uh, any animal products in everything they use. So cosmetics, um, their shoes, you name it, everything they use, they don't want to, uh, any animal to be hurt. For the whole food plant-based people, that might be the, the case, but is not necessarily the case. So some people that purely do it for health might still have, you know, like leather shoes, for instance. The difference between a whole foods plant-based diet and a vegan diet 
is that the emphasis in the whole foods plant-based diet is we like to look at it as of adding in the emphasis is on eating lots of whole grains legumes starchy non-starchy vegetables and fruits whereas a vegan diet can include and often does include highly processed food like um, vegetable oils and uh, uh, refined grains and uh, um, processed food like vegan meats and vegan cheese and al although it could be said that um, um, you know a, a whole foods plant-based diet I guess is a form of a vegan diet you can have a vegan diet that's um, actually not very healthy and um, not based on many whole plant foods at all. In the United States this is becoming a huge business Re meat replacement animal product replacement and so every few months as I'm showing my patients something that they could use instead of whatever their favorite toxic animal product is, and uh, I've actually had incredible success going to a search in engine, type in vegan blank whatever, okay? And um, I've struck out three times. One woman wanted bison. Uh, a guy wanted uh, armadillo. Uh, and a person wanted possum. There are no vegan possum <laughs> products, but if you go with mainstream American diet, you can get almost everything completely placed, replaced. Uh, chicken is probably the, the biggest product, just the number of things and the number of plants that can be turned into chicken. Uh, and it's everything from mushroom protein to, to whole grain to soy to um, so I'm, I'm not actually sure I know what Gardein protein is. I think it's chickpeas perhaps, but they, um, you know, multiple brands and you can get, uh, it sounds a little bit like that Forrest Gump movie, you know, when he was talking about the shrimp. Uh, you really can get chicken nuggets, chicken, chicken breasts, chicken patties, chicken legs, chicken, you can get chicken anything uh, in, in most grocery stores. And so if the first thing I do, if someone is, if I can convince them to do a whole food plant-based diet, great. If they're reluctant, I immediately go to the transition diet. Tell me what you like and I'm going to find it for you. Although most people who've changed to a whole foods plant-based diet will tell you just change overnight, changed instantly, when you ask them how they did it, most of them actually took weeks or even months to do it. Um, because it can take some time and some people might say just you know start having some meals maybe make you breakfast whole foods plant-based each day and I guess it depends on the urgency if you've just had a heart attack you probably want to change virtually overnight if you're an otherwise healthy athlete you know it might you might want to spend several weeks sort of leaning into it and um, slowly changing over Ben & Jerry's, one of the biggest uh, ice cream manufacturers in the United States, they make vegan ice cream. Now, if you're overweight and you're diabetic, I don't think that that's a good idea to eat ice cream of any kind. But I know it's not going to increase your plaque burden directly, it's just going to be a little more indirect. Um, and so I, I think if people are really struggling, um, this whole idea of a transition diet where you convert everything, and you, you could do this, uh, Burger King, not McDonald's, but Burger King in the United States has a veggie burger. Uh, White Castle, which probably doesn't exist outside of the United States, I wouldn't think, uh, but it's a big, it's a burger chain. They started making veggie burgers um, about two years ago. And the products actually sell. And so um, I'm not convinced that it's the best thing for everyone because it still has a lot of the American fat and salt content, which people should be very careful of, particularly if they're overweight, diabetic, and hypertensive. Um, so anyway, but that, though, this is uh, an opportunity to get people to change, get out of the idea that they're going to go to the meat counter and buy uh, meat. Uh, <clears throat> they can get different kinds of cheese, you know, all made out of plants. And uh, it, if folks are fans of milk, it's an interesting thing. A few years ago, there was soy milk and almond milk. And now there's about 12 different kinds of milk. And I don't know if you can get them here in Australia, but you certainly can in the United States. I mean, things I'd never heard of, you know, rice milk, okay. Hemp, okay. <laughs> and so, um, so the, there must be a massive amount of money in this business because people are really going into it. And it, it, but it does give us an opportunity to get away from the animal products, so I welcome it. I think the, the greatest challenge with changing to a whole foods plant-based diet is um, eating out and having other people prepare your food. Um, I've had patients who are 
you know, sort of pretty ordinary middle aged, aged guys who live at home and are not very complex about their cooking or anything. And they say to me, look, at home, this is really simple. It's so simple to cook whole foods, plant based. But then as soon as you start going out to restaurants or cafes where other people start preparing the food, suddenly there's um, oil poured into everything. Um, the grains are often refined. Um, there are all these processed plant foods in there rather than whole foods. And I find that when I try and eat out, one of the challenges is not just getting the processed foods out of the meals, but it's actually getting enough calories of things like uh, brown rice and wholemeal pasta and potatoes and beans. I've had some people say that if they go to their particular grocery store and they look at the hot dogs and then the vegan hot dogs, that the vegan hot dogs are more expensive. Um, I think that's uh, not uniformly true, but expense can be an issue. And my response, of course, is, well, don't eat the vegan hot dogs, let's do whole food plant-based. It's very inexpensive. Um, it's just, uh, so finances can be an, an, a major issue. The other major problem is just the fact there's inertia. People are used to doing what they've been doing, and it's hard to get them to change. And it's hard to see, even if you show them a picture of Bill Clinton after his second uh, you know, uh, cardiac procedure, and then changing to plant-based diet, and he's great now. Well, that you know, that's someone else. And it's interesting that we all have this um, idea that we're somehow immortal, and we can smoke cigarettes, but we won't get lung cancer and that sort of thing. It's just, um, and then there's a handful of us that are ex exactly the opposite. They're pretty sure that whatever whatever I do is going to get me, and therefore I'm going to do the best I can. Um, if it's much easier to deal with those kind of people than the the people who really are resistant to understanding that they have a direct impact on their outcome with their choices. When people hear about whole food plant-based diet and they think, wow, that sounds really interesting, that, you know, I, I would like to do that. How, how should they start? And that's not always easy because usually people think, oh, I have to leave out now the dairy. I have to leave out all meats. So now there is a big, gap on my well, empty place on my plate <laughs> what do I do now and yeah it, it, it's not easy I think the physicians committee for responsible medicine pcrm.org is a really good website to start off with very comprehensive information on all sorts of issues issues related to this way of eating and uh, your health also for pregnant women for um, uh, lactating um, women, the, the babies, so that's all been addressed. They also have a 21-day kickstart program. It's all for free. You only have to register. It starts every first of the month and that I think that's a really good and also fun way because they have good videos, they have certain celebrities that talk and uh, uh, you know are also involved, so I think that would be a good approach. Um, furthermore, in uh, Australia, we have a really good uh, website, very comprehensive information and quality information there. It's called wholefoodplantbasedaustralia.com.au. And there is also for people that are on Facebook, a, a very supportive Facebook group called Whole Food Plant Based Aussies. And that's where you find a lot of information, but also a lot of support. To overcome the, uh, the challenges in, uh, in, following, uh, in trying to transition to a whole foods plant-based diet, you could do a live-in program and go and do a 10-day John McDougall program or something like that. But I guess it might mean mostly cooking your own food within your own family for a period of time and starting to regard going out as more a social vent and, and uh, being less dependent on the uh, food you might get when you go out. How can a whole food plant-based diet lifestyle reverse heart disease? It's too good to be true, but it's true. We have seen in very reliable research that patients suffering from coronary artery narrowing, so with the well-known chest pain, the angina, one group of these patients were given a whole food plant-based diet. The other group of patients followed the advice of their cardiologist. And we could see after two years and after five years that the narrowing of the coronary arteries actually improved. 
We could also demonstrate in those patients that they have significantly less chest pain and had significantly less cardiac events. And this is amazing because with all the cholesterol lowering drugs, with all the procedures, with um, the angioplasties, we can sometimes stabilize disease, but we cannot reverse it. And I don't know of any other diet so far, but whole food plant-based nutrition where this was demonstrated in very solid research. A whole food plant-based diet can reverse heart disease and we have seen that with uh, angiograms and certain scans that can uh, see how the heart muscle is being um, oxygenated, uh, gets its blood before uh, the start of uh, going on a plant-based diet and afterwards. But now, how does that work? Why does that happen? I think we have to realize um, that all these chronic diseases, including heart disease, is a chronic inflammation disease. And because of the high fats, for instance, but it's not only saturated fat and cholesterol, there are other factors as well that comes with animal products. Uh, the heme iron, for instance, so the blood iron, and also products are being produced by, um, uh, in, uh, through our gut bacteria. And then the liver, it's called TMAO, it's highly um, uh, arthrogenic, so that means that uh, it, it um, damages the artery walls. When we take away these inflammatory components from our diet, then the body gets the opportunity to heal and starts just cleaning out the garbage, basically. So now, because if you keep eating this, it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, every time we are hurting our bodies with every meal, when we stop doing that, then the body gets the, 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 the chance to start healing. And, and then the body can really do a really good job and very quickly. And they start cleaning out these plaques. I think when there are really old calcifications, that might be really hard to, to clean them out, but they won't hurt you. They will stay there. That's not a problem. But the plaques, as, as long as they are not really calcificated, uh, you can, um, the body will break that down. So our immune system and, and, and everything that's in our body to heal ourselves, cells in our body, the white blood cells for instance, they will clean out these arteries. And uh, yeah, and they, they start doing that and uh, that might take a, a while before you get to, a, uh, you know, um, that the plaque is nearly gone. But people will feel improvement, for instance, chest pain already very quickly in, in a few days or maybe a week time. They already can feel uh, improvement and that is maybe not firstly the plaque that becomes already smaller at that instance, but the blood vessels, they become more elastic again, they relax better, the blood becomes thinner because of what we eat, healthy food, and uh, that's why you already see very quickly um, effects. I think that what's happening is that animal products, eating them increases your inflammation. And when you stop, it just goes back to normal. Okay, so, I, but I, I really would love someone to prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. We do call it an anti-inflammatory diet, but when you think about it, it's probably not what's happening. You're probably eating poison, and then the poison stops, and then, you know, so.